What's up, everybody? Supreme Decisions here, and the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. And this loud ass helicopter. Well, we've been gone for a minute, and now I'm working on getting caught back up for the most part. But today, I have an opportunity to speak on something here. Because a lot of times, like I said in the last podcast, I'm not doing these podcasts, and these interviews, and these long tirades and going through all of this type of research and putting these things together for the people that actually follow me. I do this simply for the people who believe that just because someone puts on a uniform, that they are that person. They are a part of that structure, that they are part of that entity. Here's why. Because when I did What Color is the Line, I spoke about police officers committing wrongs against other police officers. When I spoke about police unions, I spoke about the money that police unions are putting in and putting bad cops back into the field. I spoke about the money that police unions are putting into politics that allow for bad cops to flourish. And I talked about the money that police unions don't put in for police mental health. And I keep going to certain, I actually refer to them as targets, because they're easy targets. Because one of the things I I, I actually love was Tupac. He talked about how he's not going to change the world. He said 20 years ago, I'm not going to change the world, but my voice will be the one that sparks that change. What happens is, if I keep talking about this problem over here, if I keep talking about this entity right here, if I keep talking about how this looks dirty right here, somebody's going to want to clean it up. And in that context, I want to make sure I want to make sure that I'm clear, concise, and I want to make sure you understand where it is that I'm going. Because when I talked about this, I talked about the most violent police force in the country. I showed you an article. I was berated for that article. I then spoke about the police chief or the police union rep to the little the Starbucks workers for asking police officers to, hey, we'll pay for their the coffee, but could you sit somewhere else? When I spoke about the comfort level of people that were there in Phoenix, and then when I showed you the article that said the police, the Phoenix Police Department kills a citizen one every five days. That's their average. I talked about Jerry Williams and her saying it was the civilians' fault that the police officers are shooting them. I then showed you a video where a police officer not only lied about what happened, but there were several videos of that incident. They didn't turn over any videos. The video showed that a young child, three years old, had stolen a baby doll from the dollar store. A one dollar baby doll. Police officer's first instinct was to tell the parents, I will blow your effing brains out. The father then was thrown to the ground and head hit the bumper. The officer said he was resisting. The video showed that the officer was a liar, but Jerry made an excuse for it. Then we talked about the young man who did not steal a bicycle, who was tased when he had stopped, or where the police officers repeatedly tased a 50-year-old man in the genitals because he felt like it. So when I call them an easy target, it's because of the plethora, the amount of, the easiness of going after them. Because a lot of times black make excuse for them. But that's who I'm talking to on these podcasts. I'm talking to the excuse maker. Because Phoenix Police Department colluded with the prosecutors to invent a game only 
to then falsely charge protesters as gang members. Now, I'm going to go back to something that a lot of people didn't like, but it's a podcast that I did called the Thomas Sotomayor Question. Because, again, Thomas Sotomayor does not talk about law. There was a snippet, literally like a five-minute section, in which he was doing a show, and he brought up something that most people never caught. He asked a question. He said, if you have a police officer who doesn't know law, you have a prosecutor who doesn't care about evidence, you have a defense attorney who doesn't defend and a judge who doesn't care either way. How is that one person able to get justice? Where is justice at? That's the question that I'm bringing to you today. Because again, when you have the police creating law, that's a lie. Putting people who are innocent, who are allowed to protest into a gang database. You are now labeling them for life as a gang member. But when we talk about placing a police officer on the Brady list, which is the list in which a police officer has lied under oath or has done something in a disciplinary action which you can put their character on trial. Nobody wants to do that. Where you're telling them they have to wear body cameras, but they don't have to turn it over for evidence. You're telling them they have to write a police report, but they can't give you accurate dialogue because they have to use stock language. Yes, I pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand where it is I'm going with. Because even when that Thomas sort of my your question, it goes to the effectiveness of placing someone into a gang database. The effects short term as well as the long term effects of someone that's living in Phoenix or choosing to leave Phoenix as a gang member. Because I want you to understand something. One of the three, one out of three, things needed increase for bail denial is an ongoing threat to the community. Now, if I call you a gang member, does that sound like you're an upstanding citizen? Or does that give me ammunition to say, well, they may go out and do this again. This may be something that can be escalated. This may be something that they're going to continue or even profit from. Now, the original context of this was not part of this podcast. The original context was it. But what happened was in the middle of writing another podcast, I came across the rest of the context of this. Not that I didn't do the research prior, but it wasn't originally supposed to be a podcast. So now, we have to speak about my favorite talk, the most violent police department in the country, five years running, under Jerry Williams. The place where they murder a citizen every five days is the citizen's fault. According to Jerry Williams, the place where they will blow your effing brains out if a three-year-old takes a dog from the dollar store. They want you to feel them. Oh, and I forgot about that. See, me rushing through, trying to get in all this, I forgot they also are passing a bill that restricts you filming them doing their job. Because remember, I just told you, they don't turn over their own body camera for you. Because they don't want to be held accountable for the fuckery that they are doing. I want you to understand that. This is the people that we're supposed to trust and respect. But who do I trust? I actually, when I was speaking to the Phoenix Police Commissioner on Twitter before I got banned from that, I asked 
if I want people to be comfortable around me, would I not stop murdering them? Yes, that's a thing piece, but I want you to understand something. That's the context. They want someone to be comfortable around them knowing that they're liars, knowing that they're going to kill them, knowing that they don't even follow law. But you're supposed to respect me now. You're supposed to listen to me now. You're supposed to honor me now. The question is why? Because Arizona police, more specifically, the Phoenix Police Department, they created a gang, arrested people, and stated they were an imaginary gang. They didn't use the word imaginary, that they were in this gang. And prosecutors knew it was a lie. Hence, when I used the word previously, colluded. Because that's exactly what, this is collusion. This is actors in concert. You heard me say that before. You've seen me display that pride. I've actually used that. I'm actually using that actively now in multiple federal court cases. But here's where we go crazy at. Prosecutors knew it was a lie and still continue to prosecute them maliciously. Because see, this is where the state of Arizona gets involved in. Because prosecutor knowing, knowingly pursued someone as a gang member, as a lie. It was a conscious, willful act. Remember, because even now the police officers that are participating in this, they are no longer available to qualify immunity. Why? Because one of the two things that's needed is either ignorance or a willful act. You're either colluding with them because you're actors in concert, or you're too stupid to know the difference. These are the things that you have to understand, because this is why I say these things, because just speaking them doesn't mean anything, but showing you what these words mean offers the power that these words bring. Now, when they're placed as gang members in the police records, just like I talk about the people that are leaving things, they're placed to a gang database. Now, one of the things, I'm going to get back to this real quick. I actually have a young man that's down in Florida. He was arrested. Now, the thing about his arrest was, the police officer lied in the report. Now, this person is also a governmental, I guess, agent or worker or however you want to, employee. So he works closely with the police. And one of the things he said was, I really don't want to go after him. I just want the case dismissed. I told him, I said, here's the problem. You have to get that taken off of your record. He says, why? I said, one, you're dark skin. That's easy. You know, because that's pretty much why you were arrested in the first beginning. He said, okay. He said, but here's the thing. What's the first thing that's done to you if a police officer kills you? He starts laughing. He goes, well, they're going to talk about my past. They're going to talk about your past arrest. The first thing, he has a arrest for violence against a police officer. That's a vague ass statement. What, what was violent? What, what level of violence? What was the word violence in that case mean? And excuse, that's what that means. But I told him, I said, here's the thing. In Phoenix, don't they run your, in Florida, don't they run your place? And yeah, I said, so when they run your place, they actually have your record pull up. He's like, yeah. I said, now here's the great part about it. The police are now more amped because you have a violence against police officer charge. They're more amped to now approach you more aggressively because that's what they are. They're trained attack dogs. So that is their cue to attack violence against them. Oh, you think you can fight back against the police officer? That, that taken off. But see, now what happens if you're a gang member? What if you're an 18-year-old college kid and you're labeled as a gang member? What if you're a 19 year old college kid that's labeled as a gang member? Here's what I'm giving you. What if you're a police officer and you're labeled as a gang member? What then? I'm going to come back to that because I have another conversation for that. Because there was a TV show called Defenders. 
And one of the things he talked about was equal protections. But the example he gave was two individuals on opposite sides of one bed. You're only punishing the loser. So when I'm talking about the police officer being a gang member, you remember I gave you a, a stat with Officer Dingle where I talked about a police officer in the Cab County that was a gang member that was killing folks on traffic stops. Multiple, not one, not two, multiple. Talk about the police officers that are in the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department where the sheriff said, Yes, they've been gang members for 150 years and then says six months later after he's elected, there are no gang members in the L.A. Sheriff Department. But then we talk about something I'm going to hit you with again shortly. A lot of people give the negative connotation to Christopher Donovan. He was in that exact same Sheriff Department where he spoke about the gang members and the rampart corruption. And look how he was vilified. They kept preaching his manifesto, but yet they lied about what was in it. But those are the people we're supposed to trust. And these are the people that are labeling us. Because again, you know, they have cognitive exception because they have the, the opportunity to pick and choose who it is they're going to write tickets for, who they're going to arrest, and who they're going to prosecute. They get to cherry pick that. And basketball people hate that. Oh, well, you're just cherry picking. Well, why are we not having that same energy for prosecutors? Why are we not having that same energy for police officers? Because it's officer discretion. It's prosecutorial discretion. These are the things that I talk about. Because when we talk about that, you know, I'm not going to get too deep into it. Because when I talk about these things, because men lie, women lie, numbers don't. When we talk about the numbers, even in Beverly Hills, I'm, that might get too deep for you because when you have a 100% white police force that has never arrested anyone that is not black or Hispanic in a three year span in Beverly Hills you're looking for that needle in a haystack just understand that but these are the people that I want to talk to you about because these are the people you're telling me I should trust. These are the people you're telling me I should comply with because what happens when I comply? Esplendo Castillo, who can't because he complied and got killed. Ask Charles Hutchinson. They weren't even looking for him. He got shot while laying down on his stomach. Walter Chamberlain Sr., oh, we can't. Because he's dead. When we talk about these things, it becomes different. Because again, we moralize murder. We make excuses for murder. But again, it goes right back to this. They want to talk about how aggressive he was, but they didn't want to talk about the lies the police officers told. They talked about how he didn't want to open the door, but they didn't want to talk about how the police officer didn't even follow their own procedures. Because even in George Floyd, well, he was on something he could possibly might have been on, son, except whenever we got the autopsy at the, at the trial, it showed he wasn't. But we were willing to accept the murder of George Floyd simply because we didn't want to see our hero tarnished. We didn't have to want, we didn't want to have to answer that question of what if, what if we don't comply? What if we do comply? What if they aren't honest? What if they aren't respectful? What if they're putting me in a gang database? What if they're using that gang database to kill me? Because they created the gang, they created the people, they created the prosecution. So now because policing is a dangerous job because, again, it's not in the top 30. But we should understand that it's dangerous because they're creating the danger. I'm going to talk about that too because at the end of the day, you're telling me it's a dangerous job and I should understand, but you're doing things to create dangerous situations. 
Because you're telling me, oh, this guy with dark skin is, is the one that's killing us. Yet, that's less than 1% of all police officer deaths. The higher percentage goes to another. I'm not going to get into that. But here's the great part about it. The programming or the propaganda. Oh, yeah. That keeps getting deleted every time I put it up. Amanda Ruffin can't talk about this because if she does, the conversation isn't for the people that's following her. It's for the people who wants to make excuses, who want to moralize murder, those that want to say that the police are good people. They want to say the prosecutor. It's only a few. But then when I give you the Minnesota Department, where it's 96% bad, is it still a few? How can we find so many bad and if it's only a few? How is it higher? You know what? Uh, let me go on because, again, this is the police that's creating the gang member. This is the police that's destroying someone's life who has yet to become a gang member. They're prosecuting someone who's doing something that is lawful, that is constitutionalized, that is also a restriction on them to not do. But we're supposed to respect and trust that. And when they're using that person's past, which would be that arrest, as a gang member, they, used, they were in fear for their lives, and they used that to murder them. It's okay because we moralize murder by saying at one point they were a bad person. Not that they committed a crime right now, but they did before, so it was okay. It's the officer that did it. It wasn't some random person, but what if the officers what the officers not doing their job properly? What if it's done through negligence like Kim Porter? What if that murder is done through negligence, like Amber Guy? What if that murder is done through a willful act, like Muhammad? What about the violence that's perpetrated by Atlanta police officers that are currently serving? What if? Just what if? Because I've given you these stories. I've given you these names. I've given you these numbers. What if? This was found out through records, the thing they don't want you to do. They don't want you, because again, I actually was doing another podcast when I found this. They were found through open records. See, Jerry Williams stated she didn't do this on purpose. Now, I'm going to go and do something, ready? Men's rare. Men's rare is something we talk about because it's Latin and law. And it's what people use to convict you because there must be intent. There must be a guilty mind. Right? So she said she didn't do it on purpose. That means she had knowledge at some point that it was being done. I didn't do it on purpose. That's an accident. How many times did she commit that accident? Because if I, if I hit someone with my car, Oh, shit, that's an accident. If I hit them 87 times, at some point, it's on purpose. Jerry went to throw someone else off on the bus. And in fact, there was three someone else's. Three police officers are suing Jerry in federal court. Whoops, Jerry should be on the Brady list. Because she attacked them and demoted them. I touched on it and what color is the line? John Collins, not the drink, he was the assistant chief. Gabe Lopez, Larry Hine, they're all suing Jerry Williams. Jerry is the woman, the chief, the one that's in charge, the head honcho, the decision maker that created this situation. She went after them three because they chose like, hold on, whoa, 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 it's going too far. Yeah, what? Because we, we're trying to convict these people. That we're going too far. Mike Kurtenbach, second in command, Sergeant McBride, David Biz Colby, tweeting about gang charges. They were actually on Twitter. Three police chiefs, or 
three police officers, sergeants, second in command behind Jerry, and the county manager. They were tweeting about this. We're getting these gang members off the street from protesting. Pick a gang. The city manager, Ed Zerker, who is also in charge of risk management. Whoops. City manager, Ed Z-U-E-R-C-H-E-R, -E who is also in charge of risk management. Many of you have heard me tell you to go to risk management to do two things. One is the OSA office for the police officer. But that's also the first step when you're going to get the insurance basis for suing the state and the city and the police department. This is where this risk management is that spot because that guy has to know what's going on. He has to okay all of the fuckery. Now, the police reports of these pretend gang members contain violent lies and exaggeration. Policing is dangerous. I'm in fear for my life. Murdering them was okay because they were violent gang members. Do you see the lies you've been told? Because remember what I said. The first thing that we do to moralize murder is say he was a bad person. He was a violent gang member. That's why the police officer shot him. Because remember I talked about my man from Florida. What are they going to do? They're going to run that? Oh, you have violence against a police officer. They're protesting. They're violent gang members. What if you're an 18-year-old college student? What if you're innocent? See the lies in the talk? But do you understand now context of why I say challenge everything? You're saying I'm violent, prove it. You're saying I'm a gang member, prove it. Now, I'm going to even throw in this. Because remember, Fanny in Atlanta was charging Young Thug with YSL. She has yet to show. She actually stated, I have no proof that they're a gang. But they have YSL tattooed. But do you remember also in Los Angeles where the police officers have these similar tattoos? Oh, they're just part of a club. This that doesn't mean anything. For young thug, it means something. For the police, it means nothing. You can see the lies you've been told. But now do you understand the context of the challenge? These people who were just protesting. They were said by police officers that they were violent gang members. So now the police who are doing a, uh, what do you call it, a, 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 a violent job, they're, they're doing a high-risk job, you should understand. But we don't have the same context about the loggers. You know, the most dangerous job in America is logging, not a police officer. Say that one more time. The most dangerous job in America is logging, not police officers. I don't have the same conversation about the loggers when they're killed as I do when a police officer is killed. I don't have the same conversation when a police officer kills a police officer. I don't have the same conversation when a police officer beats up another police officer. I don't have the same conversation whenever a police officer is demoted for correcting the behavior of a bad police officer. Why is that? See the lies you've been told? But understand, Jerry Williams testified this made up gang was comparable to the Bloods and Crips, even the Hells Angels. I'm going to repeat that one more time because, again, Jerry Williams should be on a Brady list. Jerry Williams testified that this pretend gang that she made up was as comparable to the Bloods and Crips. Even the hell's angels. But we should trust her. 
We should believe in her leadership. We should be okay with how her officers are behaving as the most violent police force in America. Jerry Williams lied and said she knew nothing about what was going on and forgot about the recordings that she had at every Monday morning free. Do you now understand why they don't turn over records? Do you now understand why it is they don't want to take responsibility? Because again, when you're putting on that uniform, nobody likes, let's say, I don't have any issue with a police officer. Because I'm acting sound like I'm in the 80s. So we don't have a problem with rap. We don't have a problem with rap music. We do have a problem with those thugs. I don't have police, a problem with police officers. I don't have a problem with policing. But we do have a problem with those thugs. You know, the bad apples. We have a problem with the bad apples. We have a problem with the continuation of having 23 department complaints against someone. If they can't follow your rules, why are we still having this conversation? 